Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using Clapeyron's theorem of three moments. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans, span AB and span BC. In the span AB, there is a point load 50 kN acting at 2 meter from the point A. In the span BC, there is uniformly distributed load 24 kN per meter acting for the full span in the point A and in the point C. We are having fixed supports. In the point B, there is a hinged support. Span AB is 5 meter long. Span BC is also 5 meter long. In this beam, we have to find three moments MA, MB, and MC. So we need three equations. One equation can be formed using two spans. We are having only two spans. Using these two spans, we can create only one equation. So, we have to create two imaginary spans, one on the left of A and one on the right of C. You can see that I have created one imaginary span on left of A. This span is A naught A of length L naught. On the right of C also, I have created one span. It is C C naught of length L3. Now we can make three equations. Using the spans A naught A and A B, we can make the first equation. Using the spans A B and B C, we can make the second equation. Finally, using the spans BC and CC0, we can create the third equation. Now, let us take the spans A0A and AB and make the first equation. Now, let us calculate the ordinate for the span AB. In the simply supported beam, if the point load is not acting on the center, the formula to calculate the maximum bending moment under the load is WAB upon L. Here W is 50, A is 2, B is 3, L is 5. When we apply in the formula, we are getting 60. A not A is an imaginary span, so we should not create any diagram for that. Now, let us apply the theorem of three moments in spans A0A A and AB. In this equation, we have to calculate area 1 and x bar right. This is a triangle. We know the formula for the area of a triangle half into breadth into height. Here, breadth is 5 meter, height is 60. When we apply in the formula, we are getting 150. Now we have to calculate x bar right. That means we have to calculate the centroid distance of this triangle to the right. In this kind of triangle, the centroid distance towards the left is L plus A upon 3 and towards the right is L plus B upon 3. Now we are calculating on the right side. So the formula is L plus B upon 3. Here L is 5, B is 3. When we apply in the formula, we are getting 5 plus 3 upon 3. 5 plus 3, we will get 8. So x bar right is equal to 8 by 3 meter. Now let us apply the values in this equation. L naught is equal to 0 because it is an imaginary span. L1 is equal to 5 meter. Area 1 is equal to 150. X bar right is equal to 8 upon 3. This term and this term will be 0 because these are for the imaginary span. Finally, we are making the first equation. Now, let us take the spans AB and BC and make the second equation. For the span AB, we have already calculated the ordinate. 
Now let us calculate the ordinate for BC. In the span BC, we are having UDL acting for the full span. In the simply supported beam, if the UDL is acting for the full span, the formula to calculate the maximum bending moment is WL square upon 8. Here W is 24, L is 5. When we apply inside the formula, we are getting 75. Now let us apply the theorem of three movements in spans AB and BC. Area 1 we have already calculated. Now let us calculate x bar left. In this triangle, we already saw the formula for the centroid distance towards the left. The formula is L plus A upon 3. Here L is 5, A is 2. When we apply inside the formula, we are getting 5 plus 2 upon 3. So for x bar left, we are getting 7 upon 3 meter. Now let us calculate A2. For this second degree parabola, the area formula is 2 by 3 into breadth into height. Here the breadth is 5, height is 75. When we apply inside the formula, we are getting 250. Now let us calculate x bar right. This is a symmetrical diagram. So the centroid lies in the center. When we divide the length 5 by 2, we will get x bar right which is equal to 2.5 meter. Now in this equation, let us apply the values. We have already calculated area 1, x bar left, area 2 and x bar right. Let us apply the values. L1 is equal to 5 meter and L2 is equal to 5 meter. Let us apply them also. Finally, we are making the second equation. Now, let us take the spans BC and CC0 and make the third equation. Let us apply the theorem of three movements in the spans BC and CC0. Area 2, we have already calculated. Let us calculate x bar left. We know that it is a symmetrical diagram. So, the centroid lies in the center. When we divide the length by 2, we will get x bar left which is equal to 2.5 meter. In this equation, this term and this term will be zero because these are for the imaginary span. We have already calculated area 2 and x bar left. Let us apply the values. L2 is equal to 5 meter and L3 is equal to zero. Let us apply them also. Finally, we are making the third equation. Alternatively, using the formula, we can calculate these two terms. So, we can save lot of time. First, let us take the spans A0A and AB. Here, we have to calculate 6A x bar right upon L. Here, a point load is acting. If in the span, point load is acting, the formula for 6A x bar right upon L is WB upon L into L square minus B square. Here W is 50, B is 3, L is 5. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 480. Let us apply the value in the equation. So easily we are making the first equation. Now let's apply the formulas in the spans AB and BC. First, let's see for the span AB. Here, we need to calculate 6A x bar left upon L. The formula is WA upon L into L square minus A square. Here, W is 50, A is 2, L is 5. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 420. Now, let us see the formula for the span BC. Here UDL is acting for the full span. If UDL is acting for the full span, the formulas are WL cube upon 4 and WL cube upon 4. Here for 6A x bar left upon L and 6A x bar right upon L, the formulas are same.
Let us apply the values inside the formula. W is 24, L is 5. When we apply, we are getting 750. Let us apply the values inside the equation. Finally, we are making the second equation. Now, let us take the spans BC and CC0. We already saw the formula for 6a x bar left upon L. Inside the formula, let us apply the values. Finally, we are getting 750. Let us apply 750 in this equation. Finally, we are making the third equation very easily. We have made three equations. Now, we can use the calculator and solve these three equations. In this way, we can get the final moments. Now, let us calculate the reactions. To calculate the reactions, we have to split the beam according to the spans. There are two spans AB and BC. So, we have to split the beam into two parts. In the span AB, MA will be acting in the anticlockwise direction and MB will be acting in the clockwise direction. In the span BC, MB will be acting in the anticlockwise direction and MC will be acting in the clockwise direction. Now let us take the span AB and calculate the reactions. In the span AB, first I am going to find RA. For that, I am going to take moment about B. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. The vertical reaction RA is acting towards the point B in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 5. So 5 RA. The point load 50 kN is acting towards the point B in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is 3 meter. So, minus 50 into 3, then there are two moments. The moment 29.5 is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. The moment 37 is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive. After the calculations, we are getting Rea is equal to 28.5 kN. To calculate Rb1, let us apply the rule summation of vertical forces is equal to 0. In this span, there are three vertical forces Ra, Rb1 and the point load 50 kN. The reactions Ra and Rb1 are acting upwards. So, both of them will be positive. 50 kN is acting downwards. So, it will be negative. We have already calculated Ra 28.5. So instead of Ra, let us apply 28.5. In this way, we can calculate Rb1 which is equal to 21.5 kN. Now, let us take the span BC and calculate the reactions. In this span, first I am going to calculate Rb2. For that, I am going to take moment about C. The vertical reaction Rb2 is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 5. So 5 Rb2. The UDL 24 kN per meter is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. When the UDL comes, we have to multiply with the distance and a distance upon 2. Here the distance is 5 meter, so 5 into 5 upon 2. Then there are two moments. The moment 37 is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. And the moment 56.5 is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive. After the calculations, we are getting Rb2 is equal to 56.1 kN. Now let us apply the rule summation of vertical forces is equal to 0. In this span there are three forces Rb2, Rc and the UDL 24 kN per meter. 
RB2 and RC are acting in the upward direction. So both of them will be positive. The UDL is acting downwards. So it will be negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance to get the total load. We have already calculated RB2. Let us apply the value. In this way, we are getting RC is equal to 63.9 kN. We have calculated the reaction in the point B two times. Let us add both of the values RB1 and RB2. After adding, we are getting RB which is equal to 77.6 kN. Now we are going to draw the shear force diagram. Before drawing, let us find the shear force values. I am going to calculate the shear force values from the point A and towards the point C. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. You can see the calculations here. Using the values, we can draw the shear force diagram. Now, we are going to draw the bending moment diagram. For the bending moment diagram, first we have to make the free moment diagram, then end moment diagram. Finally, we have to combine both of them to get the bending moment diagram. For the free moment diagram, we have to assume each span as a separate simply supported beam and calculate the moments. In this analysis, we have already calculated the ordinates initially. Using them, we can make this diagram. Using the end moments, we can make the end moment diagram. Now, let us combine the free moment diagram and end moment diagram to make the bending moment diagram. You can see that I have combined both of the diagrams wherever they are acting alone without mingling with one another. We have to mark the values with the sign. Here the end moment diagram is coming alone. Here the free moment diagram, then end moment diagram, then free moment diagram, finally the end moment diagram. Wherever they are together, we are not marking anything. We just keep the space empty. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.